Okay, so we have just found one of the most incredible cars in, in the world, in my opinion, and here it is at the castle, at the Benedict Castle Concours and Car Show for the benefit of Team Challenge. So we're very grateful to the Nethercut Museum for, making, for bringing this out and showing this. Cam is a big part of the Nethercut Museum. Cameron, what can you tell us? Oh, actually, I think I saw you just uh, revealing the engine a moment ago. Could we see it too? Absolutely. So right here we have a 2.3 liter inline supercharged eight cylinder engine. Uh, you know, we talked earlier, it is a race car, so it's still geared, ready to go, like it would be racing tomorrow if we wanted to. It uh, makes about 185 horsepower, it'll make 200 on alcohol, and it, you definitely feel it when you're driving this thing. It, it, it'll fly down the road, and doesn't like to go slow. I'm sorry, I forgot to ask if we know the weight, like the power to weight ratio? Weight? I'm, uh, I know it's under 2,000 pounds. She's really easy to move around the museum. Um, we don't have to start her up, we could just gently push her, so very light. The power to weight is fantastic. That's really lightweight. So we'll we'll give Mike Brewer a let well well all right so <laughs> so a two thousand pound a two thousand pound car is actually contextually very, very light, even though it sounds heavy to folks who don't understand the power to weight ratio. But one of the wonderful things about this car is how this is almost like jewelry in the engine. It's demoscened or turned almost like the dash. Oh, uh, the Fiddleback Maple Wood is what it's called, which is kind of a tongue twister, but uh, it kind of looks like tiger stripes, which I love. Um, I always called it tiger wood, but yeah, it's called Fiddleback Maple. And you said that it might be ostrich leather. Uh, I know it's not ostrich, but it does definitely look like it. Um, and as small as the interior is, it's, I think it's really pretty. So one really interesting thing is that this car, Andre Bith, who had this car bodied by the Dubot Carrasserie, wanted to use Duralumin, and we can see what that looks like without the paint right here. It's just the hood and the doors that are Duralumin, and the French were very, very keen to learn about the latest and greatest metals and materials, largely due to their bicycling, but this is Duralumin. Very, very likely. So Andre Bith basically wanted to turn his Type 51 race car, which was already famous for having won the Monaco Grand Prix in its third year of existence, raced by Louis Chiron. So Andre Bith then bought it and had a lot of fun racing around, but he had lunches with Jean Bugatti, and I guess he was very inspired by the Type 57 Atlantique and decided how could I do this with Duralumin on my race car? And here, here we have it today, after 92 years. Unbelievable. It really, really is. It's, it's just amazing to see. And the interior is as beautiful as the engine. The body is just incredible. It has a fin in the back, almost like a D-type or a Tatra. So we'll get to the back in a minute. And it almost looks like a sea creature, inspired by a sea creature or something. Yeah, like, yeah, like a stingray or something. I think it looks like a bat from a bird's eye view. It's because it does have like the, yeah. the wings. Up yeah, it, it has wonderful stance. <laughs> and spats, and what do we know about these wheels actually were one of the first things that he changed, right? Because when he first saw the, uh, after lunching at, uh, in, in Paris with Jean Bugatti, he noticed the wheels on the Atlantique and thought, well, I can do that to my race car. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's everything that the Atlantique had in beauty, but also just that style of race. Um, we tried to put, the correct tires on where it could go around the track and if we were to do that we'd probably put a fresh set on but uh, everything is period correct to 1936 when Andre Biff had this car completed. But amazingly right out of the gate in 1931 it was winning Grand Prix with the top-notch race car drivers of that moment so it is a true athlete underneath this beautiful burgundy coachwork 
and we parked it right next to the Radford Type 622, which also is a race car and happens to be wearing sort of a burgundy metal streetwear itself. Well, pardon us. So, look at this. It's just a slight shade darker than the Bugatti's uh, burgundy right here, but they're just, it's like, two different expressions of the same sort of thing from different mo So the interesting thing that I actually got stumped a couple times at concourses, people were asking me what the 29RL meant and I couldn't find out what it meant. I uh, actually reached out to uh, Skip Marchetti, a, a man who worked at the Nethercut Collection for years and years, and he told me that that was actually the registration of the address of uh, the owner, Andre Bith. Um, so I guess back then that's how they would have your vehicle registration was to your home address. So. It's kind of stuck on there, we can't take it off, plus it looks cool, so just a fun fact about the rear end. Yeah. We'll be back to talk about Sounds Dubo good. in a moment, cool. because, uh, yeah, the Dubo Sauchik. Yeah, I know, we just kind of collided them. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm here with none other than Chip Foos, and we're looking at this wonderful Dubo-bodied Bugatti. And Chip, you know, you know how important it is to, for a bodybuilder to get press, media, that kind of thing, especially from an auto show. Yes. So back in the day, uh, when Andre Bith had this body by Dubot, the uh, news stories came out and credited the body to Sauchik. Oops. <laughs> I know. And it really... I didn't, I didn't know that bit of history. It's, it's incredible, and it really makes you wonder, would the Dubot Karasari have been more well-known today, had they gotten their proper press? It may have been. Now, is this something you learned from your father, or how did you how did you hear about this? From uh, the Nethercut Museum had a wonderful file of information, and I really dug into it and found that that was kind of one of the things in there. Uh, also, I did look at some French books. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. But this is a beautiful car. You know, it always reminded me of you know the GB, the little short, stubby airplane. That's what this car reminds me of, and I absolutely love yes. both of them. And it'd be fun to do a sketch of this with the GB paint scheme. It would, it would. The I don't remember what the P number was, but yeah. it's the little stubby. Yes, race, with the race, forward swept yeah. wing. Red and white, it's just, just oh, yeah. it looks yes, like a yes, cartoon yes, almost, yes. but yeah. absolutely gorgeous. And the proportions and just where the cockpit is, it's just this tiny little shape. And that's what this is. Everything's just tiny up here, but it's all about these beautiful shapes. Uh, my dad was, you know my dad? <laughs> <laughs> Stuart <laughs> Reed, yes. Um, he was explaining that uh, oftentimes designers like to use a race car and rebody it. Kind yes. Of, kind of like Pete Brock. Uh, maybe you have some some thoughts about that. Well, that happened quite a bit, and uh, you know, it, it's interesting to me that the history of all these cars, and even you know, when you get into the custom car world, you've got Dean Jeffries who took that Maserati and built the uh, Monterey with, or. Manta Ray, he called it, oh, and that is a gorgeous little white custom. But underneath, that car, in its stock form, is an unbelievable, val uh, unbelievably valuable car. But now, as that one-off show car, it's extremely rare. And that's the same thing that this is, really. This was a race car, and now it's just a beautiful, classic, elegant luxury car. Indeed, yes. It's almost a what a or might have been today had had they bodied it uh, a body to race car yes it's fantastic and it's just amazing to walk around benedict castle and all the history and the cars that are here today yes indeed thank you very much great to see you here have a good day
classic music to an automotive ear. <laughs> Indeed it is. Right now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's thank exactly you why we love Carl. That was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. We have a little blip.